Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining in. As this entire week, Planetarium was celebrating World Space Week 2023. The World Space Week is an international celebration of science and technology. In this celebration, we have talked about commercial space age, entrepreneurship in astronomy and science communication, and today we'll be discussing on a very important topic, look through the Indian telescope. Because uh, when we talk about space or exploration, the basic requirement or thing that comes to our mind is telescope. So we decided to include this very important topic in this celebration of World Space Week 2023. In this talk, we will explore different Indian telescope that includes different types of telescope, radio telescope, optical, solar, even space telescope of India. This talk is also make people understand that there are more to telescope they are of different shapes and sizes and sometimes we see the result on the screen and process our result some objects in sky emit different wavelength and that's why they are so many different telescopes we will also look at some of the foreign telescope in brief and to share more on this and uh, insight on this topic we have with us a mature astronomer and citizen scientist at rad at home india miss megha rajoria planetarium welcome megha uh, Ms. Uh, Rajoria is an active scholar who had worked closely under the guidance of Dr. N. Ratna Shri since 2008 towards the restoration of the Jantar Mantar Observatory in Stumata, Delhi. She is a passionate science communicator and strongly believe in raising public awareness about the rich scientific heritage of India. Ms. Megha Rajoria is a trained citizen scientist, e astronomer, who loves poring over the photos of the sky. Not those Instagrammable pictures of pretty blue sky, but very high resolution images of the night sky captured by GMRT situated at the campus of NCRA Pune. Ms. Rajoria is part of Growing Citizen Science Collaboratory, that is RAD Home India, the first Indian citizen science research program in astronomy, the zero funded zero infrastructure nationwide inter-university collaboratory has been established at the platform where any BSc, BE undergraduate, postgraduate can do multi-wavelength extragalactic astronomy research by utilizing the power of internet. In the past, she was associated with Doordarshan and with Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, National Institute of Science Communication and Policy Research. Beside this, she has been teaching visually impaired students of Blind Relief Association in Delhi. Recently, she completed her research project as PI, which is Jantar Mantar Research Project under Nehru Planetarium, in which a lot of undergraduate students were involved to get hands-on experience. Soon, she will be presenting her this work on international platform. Presently, she is also volunteering at the Planetarium in New Jersey, USA. So we have a lot of good, a lot of good memories with Megha in the past. We have done a lot of work together. and. Uh, after a long time, uh, Prime Chairman got privileged to host her talk on this platform wholeheartedly on behalf of Prime Minister Museum and Library and Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. I welcome Megha Rajoria to share more detail about such an interesting topic that we are going to discuss today. Over to you, Megha. Welcome. Thank you, Prina, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I welcome all of you here today uh, in the World Space Week. And as Prerna Ma'am said that uh, we have done quite a few talks in this week and today we are going to talk about uh, Indian telescope in detail. Uh, I, I have tried to um, made a comprehensive uh, presentation where we are going to talk about different types of telescope and understand that how telescopes work at different wavelengths. And um, there is so much to talk about telescopes uh, anyways and in whatever limited time we have today uh, we'll try to touch upon every thing but if there are few things that are left out or you want to discuss with me you can always reach out to me on my email id and you can take it from prana ma'am uh, let me share my screen okay i hope my screen is visible Uh, Prerna ma'am, is my screen visible? Uh, yes, Megha, it's visible. 
now uh, the, i have made the full screen uh, and me meanwhile mega will start the presentation i request all the online participant if you have any query doubt or question you want to ask uh, mega during the program i request you to drop that in the chat box so that after the presentation we could take those thank you yes so uh, hello everyone again and uh, so looking through the indian telescope uh, we all have uh, used telescope at some point or heard about it if not used and if you have not used one do go to planetarium in one of their uh, observations evenings I, I don't know exactly what time they host it now but i'm sure you can get in touch with them and you should go and you know try to uh, see through the telescope different celestial objects so what you see in this uh, photograph here is i'm standing uh, and there is a big dish behind me. So we will come to know what this big dish is. Right now, all I will say is that it's actually a telescope. So all this while, uh, we think that telescope is something, you know, that is basically a rod and there is an eyepiece and you look through it. So that's what that's how it was you know, invented at one point of time in 1609 by Galileo when he pointed this tube thing towards the sky and saw the moon. But over the years, the structure of telescope, the usage of telescope has changed. So when was it first used in India? So I was going through the records and I came across this interesting article and you can always download it. It's available online. Uh, it says that around 1618, it was Jahangir who was very much interested in astronomy. Uh, he pointed it out towards the sky to saw some comets, although these comets were visible to naked eye. But he still, you know, used his scope to see uh, the activity and actually record it. So I won't bore you much with the historical details, but I think it's important to understand the chronology from where we have come uh, today. So primarily there are, you know, these different types of telescopes that we have, solar, optical, gamma ray, radio telescope, and now India has space telescopes as well that we're going to talk about very briefly. So this is the spectrum and uh, you must have studied it at some point of time in your school or in your college. And uh, we know that this is the uh, visible spectrum here, the visible region that is visible to the human eye. But there is a part of the spectrum which is not visible to the human eye. So you see radio, microwave, infrared, and then you see ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma ray. So the part that is not visible to the human eye is the part where different telescopes come into picture. So we will know about them in the coming slides. So let's start with the visible spectrum first. So sun, that's the biggest thing that we see in the sky. And we have solar observatories so we have we do have those in india as well but why do we need them so we need solar observatories to understand sun what are sunspots what are solar flare, flares uh, if there is any change in the solar radiation and if these solar flares are going to affect the satellites that are going in our orbits and in the space so likewise we have a couple of solar observatories in india as well so i'm just going to quickly talk about one or two um, one of the solar observatories kodaikanal solar observatory is one of the oldest solar observatory uh, which was established in 1898 and which is actually um, you know uh, observing and photographing the sun for such a long time and it's also during the solar eclipse when different filters are used to understand what goes on during during a total solar eclipse or a partial solar eclipse because there are certain activities and experiments that can only be conducted while the sun is eclipsing so that's where you know these observatories uh, become very interesting and useful so uh, similarly we have an observatory in udaipur as well and udaipur has clear skies almost throughout there except you know, a few days where uh, it, the, the skies are not that clear. So that makes this observatory very important because it can actually uh, observe the sun for the longest, 
you know, period of time. So this particular observatory has also been studying the sun's chromosphere for the last three decades. And as you can see that it is surrounded by water, I haven't got a chance to visit here. I wish I can someday. So if you get a chance to visit here, please do. Uh, because of the water, the air turbulence, you know, reduces. And due to that, the ground heating, hence lowering the ground temperature. So all these factors are important while observations are done and it affects the observation. So um, maybe that's why, you know, that it was built right in the center of the water. So now coming to optical telescopes. So these are the kind of telescopes we usually deal with. Uh, most of you might have an op optical telescope at home just to you know, look at the moon or a few planets that are visible in the evening sky or in the morning sky. So optical telescopes are also primarily of two types. One is a refracting telescope and the other is reflecting telescope. Now, what's the difference between the two? So what you see here in this image is uh, there are two scopes, but one is a refracting telescope that's called lenses, the right one. And the other one is the reflecting telescope that's got mirror in it. Now, why these two are different? So let me show you my next slide. So uh, let me also tell you this, that all the images that I've taken are primarily from uh, Wikipedia, not my own images. So just making sure that uh, there is no copyright violation here. So what you see in lenses, when a visible light is entering this lens, it is getting you know, like this. So when you see uh, the rays coming in, they are not focused at a point, at a single point. And that calls for chromatic abrasion. So because all the rays, all the uh, rays of the visible spectrum are not getting focused at a single point, you don't get a very clear image. So the image that you see here, it may not be that clear even in this slide. You see that at the top of this house, there is a blue line. So what happens that when you use a mirror telescope, that reduces the chromatic abrasion. Why it reduces the chromatic abrasion? Because the light is entering through the scope and it is uh, going to the primary mirror and then coming to the eyepiece. So this way, it's basically reflecting the image of the object to the eyepiece. But in case of refracting telescope, the light is entering and it is supposed to get focused here so that the eye can see through. But that's not really happening in a very good way because there is some sort of abrasion because they are not focused at a single point. So this is, I just compiled a slide just to make it a little bit more interesting for you. So what is magnification and resolution? So we know here that this formula theta is equal to 1 by uh, lambda by d and uh, theta is nothing but your angular resolution and lambda is your wavelength and d is your diameter, diameter of the mirror or the aperture of the telescope per se. So what really happens here is in this dog image that I really like, and it's for all the dog lovers too, uh, who are also astronomy lovers. So uh, you see that there is a magnification, like you basically zoomed in. And so it's the power of the telescope that decides the magnification is like how fine details, how much fine, finely you can see through that telescope. So you see that it's a normal image, then you zoomed in a little, then you zoomed in a little, little more. So when you magnify your object, you see that this one, the right one is little blur, but the left nose of the dog is fine. You can see the fine details. Now, when we talk about resolution, resolution is being able to distinguish between the two objects. So what you see here, uh, you know, you see one dot, then you, resolve it a little more then you see two dots and but they are very close to each other then you see them clearly so if we take a very easy ex example uh, a binary star system when you look it through a telescope you really have to you know adjust your scope in a way that uh, you can resolve between the two stars you may initially see it as one star but if you make your resolution better or if your telescope has a better resolution what you see is a proper binary star system so just to give a 
very easy example here, Hubble telescope. So Hubble has a very good image resolution for the reason that has it has really big mirrors. So the mirror of Hubble is about eight feet in diameter. So I found this image, of course, from NASA's uh, credit goes to NASA. So this is the mirror of the Hubble. Maybe at the time of the making, they got this uh, image. And this shows that, you know, how the resolution plays such an important role with the size of the mirrors. So uh, this is not an updated slide, but this will give you an idea that all the circles that you see here are basically mirrors. So bigger the mirror, better the resolution, you can say. So what you see on your right-hand side, lower corner, is a basketball court. And this is a tennis court. And you can see that there are mirrors that are bigger than a basketball court or a tennis court. So uh, that is just to play with the resolution. And so there is this TMT in Monarchia that's supposed to come up, which is even bigger and bigger um, mirrors that have been worked on. So if I quickly take you a little back in time, uh, Venu Bapu Observatory is one of the very old observatory that has its roots actually in the 17th, I think 18th century, uh, when it was actually the idea came up uh, by the Britishers to set up uh, an observatory in Madras. And uh, so this is an observatory which has a diameter of 2.3 meter. And at that time, it was like the largest telescope in Asia until the DOT was set up. So DOT is the Devstel Observatory, uh, which we will see in the coming slides. And there are some famous discovery that uh, this particular telescope has done, like, you know, the, the rings around Uranus, the outer ring of Saturn, and likewise. Then we have Aries. So uh, that's me. That's a very, very old picture, about a decade old when I was an intern in Aries. And uh, you see that there are actually four types, uh, four different telescopes in, not types, but four different uh, optical telescopes in uh, part of Aries, the Aryabhata Research Institute of Observational Sciences, uh, 104 centimeter, 130 centimeter, 3.6 meter, and 4 meter. So um, the telescope right behind me, which is this one, is 1.3 meter, which is 130 centimeter. And then we have uh, we have Devstel Optical Telescope, uh, which is 3.6, and there is also 4 meter ILMT, and uh, likewise. So what's happening in this particular telescope? So we are looking at star variability. We are looking at blazar variability. We are looking at quasar variability. And there have been different uh, ring systems around Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune that were discovered uh, by Aries. So these are the observatories that play a very important role in from the research point of view. Because uh, if you're doing your master's or you're doing your PhD, you go and learn at one of these observatories. Uh, you do your observations, you discover new things, you learn new things about the sky and the celestial bodies that are, you know, visible in the sky. So th this is for all the uh, students who have joined in here, if they are in school or in college and aiming to go to one of these observatories to learn, you can always apply whenever they have their uh, intern programs or their workshops or summer programs and go and learn here. I mean, that's how I got into, into one of these programs and learned a lot there. So then we have Devstel, which is, you know, presently one of the, it's actually the largest telescope in Asia right now. And it is discovered, the recent discovery that I came across was 29 new variable stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Then we have uh, a very important telescope, which is in Hanley. It is the Indian Astronomical Observatory. And uh, it's the Himalayan Chandra Telescope. And it is at the highest located site in the world. And uh, this telescope, HCT, Himalayan Chandra Telescope, has a diameter of 2.01 meter. And uh, uh, you see, this is one of my friends from my Rara at Home Collaboratory, uh, Yogesh. And he went to Hanley and he was kind enough to give me his pictures so that I can show it here that uh, how the telescope at such a height is working. And there is no greenery there. And you really have to, 
uh, go to lay and then travel a few hours and reach this observatory and learn things uh, then this is another telescope in the same area that's high altitude gamma ray telescope now what you see in this image is an array so i have put down a schematic diagram uh, this is from the tifr's website so you see that there are one two three four five six seven telescopes in this array and each of this telescope has another you know few number of mirrors so you see this is called hagar array and uh, it has seven telescopes and each telescope has seven mirrors in it so each mirror is 0.9 meter in diameter so what basically is happening here that this array is going to behave as one big mirror so instead of having a very big mirror which is this big what they have done is they have put down array in a way in an arrangement that this whole facility behaves like one big mirror and gives us better data and observations so we are not going into much detail of these things because uh, this is just an overview of different telescopes in india and to just to help you understand that uh, there are different kinds of telescopes within india where you can actually go you can visit you can learn and maybe if you are a student you can apply through different programs and be part of those organizations and uh, learn more so now coming back to the electromagnetic spectrum which we have already talked about in the previous slide so this was our visible spectrum the visible light that we saw through the optical telescopes but what when we are beyond this range so when we are beyond this range there are different telescopes that help us see through so we all know about jwst now and uh, so there are there is there's aries dmt which is going to come up and then we know about astrosat so uh, and gmrt that we're going to talk about in the next slide there is alma vla gbt so now what's happening here is we have another kind of telescope which is a radio telescope now radio telescope is something that is working on those objects that are continuously emitting radio wavelength so yes we have different sets of celestial bodies in the sky they are not visible to us but they are there and they are there so how are we going to observe them so we are going to observe them through different telescopes that are basically built in a way to capture that uh, wavelength and understand that particular object so what is radio astronomy so let's just quickly understand in one line what is radio astronomy radio astronomy is nothing but where you study the objects that emit in radio wavelength that's it that's what radio astronomy is so what you see here is a crab nebula and you all must have seen crab nebula in different pictures this is the picture that we usually come across which we see through our basic telescopes as well but when you see crab nebula in different telescopes you know when you see it through x-ray when you see it through infrared and radio you get different features you get to see different features you get to learn different things about that particular object that you were seeing just from optical similarly if there's a supernova or there's a radio galaxy there are different features that you can see and understand the morphology of that particular object you can understand uh, how old it is or what kind of activities are going on if there is star formation if there is dust if there is a cloud of dust or if there was any plasma emission so all these kinds of things if i want to understand i'm going to go to different kind of uh, you know wavelengths i'm going to observe in different wavelengths i'm going to go to a radio telescope uh, particularly when there is an object which is emitting in radio. So now just to quickly um, see that, you know, what all telescopes we have. So we have one in Gauri Bidnur. Um, it's, of course, one of the oldest. It's, it was, it's operational since uh, 1976, and it's a 6-meter radio telescope, which studies sun, galaxies, and pulsars. Then uh, another very old telescope is in Root Uti, which is the OT radio telescope. And um, there are a lot of interesting things to learn about this telescope, which even I have not been able to learn so far. It's very important to visit the facility 
and uh, to learn more about this telescope that how it operates how uh, it sees at a particular band and frequency and uh, the kind of data it gives and how we process it and, and, and understand different galaxies and objects through it. And uh, then we have one of the most important telescope, which is the GMIT, Giant Meter Wave Radio Telescope. Now, if we do a quick comparison about GMIT, this is a very interesting comparison slide from SKA uh, about the biggest radio telescopes and comparing them with different different telescopes so what you see here is gmrt and you you can see that it's actually a very big telescope it's a dish antenna and it's 45 meter in diameter so it's like really huge like when you see below it it's really big so that's what my first slide was when i was standing just in front of one of such big dishes and again, this is also an array. So GMRT is located in Pune, and there are 30 such dishes, which are spread across across 25 kilometers. So because we cannot have a dish which is like 25 kilometer big, huge. So what we do, we always make arrays. Arrays are where we have a lot of small, small dishes, and we combine them all. And it's it's more like that you have a dish uh, as big as 25 kilometer, but it's not 25 kilometer. It's 30 dishes spread across 25 kilometers. So this is how they look like from uh, like if we have a panoramic view, this is how they look like they are spread across this whole area. And I use this image of Redford just to uh, give you a comparison that the height of Redford is 33 meter approximately. Uh, a little more than 33 meter. And this dish has a diameter of 45 meter. So just to make you understand that how big one of these dishes are. And so these dishes are really big. And um, because they are so big, what you see in this image is, uh, you see that there actually nothing is visible. It's a very fine mesh that is there. So to make sure that if there is air gushing through, uh, the dishes are so big that, you know, if there is wind or there's a storm, it should not fall down. Uh, there is a very fine mesh so that the air can pass through. So that's how the dishes are made. And uh, this is a comparison slide between the very large array of uh, telescope in New Mexico and GMRT. So the dish antenna in New Mexico of VLA is um, 25 meter in diameter and we have 45 meter in diameter. So you can imagine it's like almost double of what is there uh, in VLA than what we have in GMRT. Then uh, now in the last few years, we all have seen uh, launch of different uh, happenings in the sky and one was Astrosat which is actually a space observatory of India and it is India's first multi-wavelength space observatory. So this as you know that it's basically a group of five telescopes so it has a lot of cameras and everything and it is continuously um, scouring the sky and taking different images sending back the data and making us understand different things that are happening in the in the space. And then this is another important uh, observatory that we have just launched. And it's soon going to reach its designated point, L1. And uh, we all were very excited when the launch took place. So uh, I just got this GIF from Wikipedia. And just to make it a little interesting and understand that how uh, it's going to reach the point. So you can see in this GIF that uh, it's first taking the orbit of Earth. And then it's finally going there in the atmosphere. And this blue point that you see is the L1 point. So that's where it is going to be. And it is a solar mission where it is going to uh, study the sun. So now coming to how you can use these facilities or how you can learn more about it, there is a very simple way. So if you are not a student, if you are a working professional like me and you still want to be part of 
uh, an organization where you can learn more about these telescopes or you can particularly learn about radio telescopes and radio astronomy and you can use one of these facilities uh, which is GMRT the best place is Rarat Home Astronomy Collaboratory India you can simply go on the website and uh, join uh, Rarat Home it is India's first citizen science research project in astronomy which I have been part of since 2013 so it's been a decade now that I've been part of this uh, group and uh, we are not an amateur uh, organization here we are uh, connected to uh, different experts and professionals from this field so uh, the PI of this collaboratory Dr. Anand Hota uh, himself is a person who has discovered quite a few uh, galaxies that I don't want to talk about in this presentation but yeah, uh, you can join the collaboratory, you can learn more about uh, uh, radio astronomy, radio telescopes, particularly GMRT. And the most important thing is that you can do research, you can discover things, and you can do all of this just by sitting at home. So um, there is this wonderful tool that is available on the website of Rad at Home India. You can simply go and look for RGB Maker. And once you are there, all you have to do is put the name of your object, put its RA deck, right ascension angle and declination angle and get image that are like these. So what are these images? These are RGB images, red, green, blue. And these are multi-wavelength images. So basically, this these images are the images that give us images of a particular object from different telescopes. It can be GMRT, it can be VLA, it can be other radio telescopes that are there and they are continuously uh, collecting data so that we can study and understand the morphology features and what's going on there with the help of these images. Because when you see in X-ray or in infrared or in radio or invisible, you get different information. And all of these things you can actually learn by joining this program. So something very interesting that I would like to share through this platform that um, that at home citizen science uh, group actually discovered a new uh, radio uh, a black hole galaxy very recently as recent as last year 2022 uh, and the discovery was actually made by you uh, by using GMRT telescope as well. So we use data from GMRT and two other telescopes, uh, Mirkart and CFHT. Uh, but yes, the uh, the initial observations were done, and the data of GMRT was used to discover this um, interesting object. You can always go on YouTube and you can find this uh, particular uh, animation where it shows that how uh, this you know this galaxy is emitting a plasma jet and it's going and it is uh, going to the other galaxy. Uh, there is a companion galaxy and then it is coming back and there is a mushroom bubble up which is forming. So the paper is also published in MNRAS. You can always go and download and look at it. If you don't have access, you can always get back to me and I can send it over. So what I'm trying to say here is that all these facilities are existing and you can be part of this and you can discover sitting at home and you can research sitting at home. All you, The only qualification is that uh, if you are uh, a student, you should be BSc, BE and BTEC. And, uh, or if you are a professional, then you, you have your basic degree in BSc, BE or BTEC and you should have internet. That's it. So uh, last but not the least, because I have been doing a lot of research uh, a lot of observations at Jantamantar observatories uh, for over 15 years now. And I did a lot of work with Dr. Ratna. She had learned so much with her. So these are also some uh, medieval era observatories. These are not telescopes, but they are observatories where you can actually go and learn about positional astronomy, where you can actually go and learn about uh, the coordinate system of uh, celestial bodies. So I have given a lot of... Uh, talks earlier on this particular topic, which you can go and check out and see and 
if you have any questions, you can always get back to me. So uh, we also have a paper published and it's also a kind of a citizen science program where you can learn about coordinates, you can learn about heritage astronomy, you can learn about uh, how to go and walk into a lab and take data. So all of this can be done with these observatories. So if any of you is in Jaipur, Varanasi, Ujjain or Delhi, you can always go here and learn more. And you can always take help from Planetarium or you can um, get in touch with me and I can help you. So with that, uh, uh, do join Data at Home India. And uh, what you see here in this map is uh, different uh, e-astronomers, which I, I am as well, uh, spread across the nation who are sitting at home and learning and discovering and uh, continuously working in the field of radio astronomy. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Mega. Uh, first of all, for sharing such beautiful presentation, illustrative presentation, and also the references which you have used is really uh, going to help uh, all the participants who are uh, who are uh, online with us today to get get the better uh, clarity and comparison uh, yes. between, and also the time lapse you have shown about what what the changes uh, in the field of telescopes happen from the pipe towards the huge gigantic telescopes we have today in our country. So uh, thank you for sharing all that uh, lovely information with us. And now I think we could take some of the questions uh, yeah. for the session. Uh, anything coming to your mind, uh, feel free to drop your question in the chat box. I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer whatever I can. Yes, yes. <laughs> because yes. I uh, do get a lot of questions from especially school children. They ask things that black holes are, <laughs> are amazing. And sometimes we are also confused and don't know the answer to it because they are uh, much better, well informed than we are these days. And that's something really good. Uh, they use internet and all sort of things. But uh, if even if you are in school and you are thinking to pursue uh, in this field or you are you have likings to this field, it's always important to be part of an organization or a group. And Planetarium is the best place. Uh, the good thing is that if you are not in Delhi and still want to be part of something like this, you can always email to Planetarium in Delhi. You can email me and we can always think of some ways to involve you, even if you're not in Delhi, because the recent project that we had that Prena ma'am talked about, uh, Janta Mantar Positional Astronomy uh, Observations Project, it had participants from all over India. There were about 200 participants and uh, they all were connected for six months. So irrespective of whether they are, they were not in Delhi, but they were part of this uh, program. So I will urge all of you that if you have interest and liking towards astronomy, telescopes, radio astronomy, uh, you can go beyond these talks and lectures and be part of these organizations. Definitely, definitely. All, all organizations which Mega mentioned, they have their uh, summer workshops and uh, yes. short term and long term programs. So you can definitely go through their website for all the latest updates like Aries Nenital do organize such camps. Yes. for all the students in which they uh, allowed participation from all over the country. So you can get in touch with all those organizations. And if you have any specific, you can write to the planetarium. We can certainly organize any kind of a workshop in your school or respective college. I think now we'll, we'll take some of the questions before going towards the question, Mega, I want you to elaborate because many of the time in your presentation, we have uh, get continuously two terms specifically, which is uh, uh, the telescope an observatory. So to begin with, let's give a comparative a differentiation between what is the telescope and when we talk about the observatory, what are the things that comes, uh, the basic difference between the observatory and telescope and when we yeah, talk about so observation. You can have a telescope at home also, but you don't have an observatory at home. Yes. Right. So you can have your small telescope and you can just see through it in the sky and you can look at moon or stars or anything you want to. But when we say observatory, observatory can be a telescope observatory or can be something like Jantar Mantar, because that is also an observatory where you actually go and conduct certain experiments, uh, look at, observe something. So observe can be with naked eye. 
it can be through telescope so when you observe something with telescope it's a telescope observatory like we have across the nation and you know they, there are facilities there are control rooms where and there are ccd ccd cameras because uh, for example aries where i did my internship uh, so you have a telescope but you also have ccd cameras there to click pictures of the object that you are looking at then you need a whole facility to you know process those images and make sure that you have got that data and understand what is going on so that's basically a compilation of all of these things makes an observatory also uh, like jantar mantar so it's a medieval era observatory why because again we are going to this place to observe something but we don't have a telescope so what do we have we have these gigantic instruments um, misra yantra samrat yantra and likewise where you go and you take data of sun you take data of any celestial body that is up there so that's again makes it an observatory the something where you go and observe you know is to be in very basic terms Um, thank you for the clarification because i just wanted to highlight this point specifically yes. because in delhi uh, many of the places we just uh, uh, like don't give that kind of a emphasis when yeah. in terms of observation uh, comes so with that uh, we'll we'll take one question uh Preetpal Sandhu, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for writing uh, today because one of the name that Mega also mentioned in her slide was Preetpal Sandhu. So uh, greetings from Planetarium, and ma'am would like to ask how can we define the high resolution images? Hi, Preetpal. <laughs> It's so good to have you uh, watch my talk and <laughs> ask this question. Yes, of course. So high resolution images will be, uh, you know, where you are getting. to see fine details of a particular object so like i showed the dog image that was about magnification but resolution is when you are able to resolve between the details so like i gave i took a took an example of a binary star system so only when you have a high resolution image is when you will be able to distinguish between those two dots otherwise if it's not a high resolution image it will look like one dot for in case of a binary star system so yeah i i hope i answered my question so uh any anything else we have lot of thank you and nice <laughs> thank you sagnik good to see you here <laughs> nikhil gupta yeah and if you have any questions related to rar at home how to join the collaboratory if you have any questions related to uh, jantar mantar and how to go and work in this observatory uh unfortunately i am not in delhi anymore but there are plenty of students there uh, uh who have learned in these last 6 months and they can help you uh, planetarium is always there to help you out and i am always available online to you can reach out to me and i can help you with the observations uh i'm also presenting this work as ma'am mentioned at the international astronomical union symposium in november in ethiopia so um uh, i'm hoping that all the hard work that planetarium and about 50 60 regular participants had put in going to the observatory and taking data will be showcased in this symposium so we are also uh, uh, yeah thank you uh, jyotirmay for this so higher aperture is like you know the diameter of the mirror so if you have a bigger diameter you can see things uh, clearly better you know you get better magnification so for example uh, i took example of hubble that hubble has eight about 8 feet of uh, mirror in it so why we have such a big mirror because when you have bigger mirrors when you have bigger aperture when your diameter is bigger in in lambda by t you have better uh angular resolution so bigger the diameter bigger the aperture better the resolution so you can resolve your details better when you have a bigger aperture and i think in connection to the first question he also like to mention what will be a large aperture uh, aperture telescope same it's uh, the same you. thing yeah yeah it's the same thing that it will give you a better resolution 
Uh, can you explain how the observations were taken for making the first real picture of black hole? Were those taken from an array telescope also? Uh, thank you, Amritanj. Uh, so yeah, so what what we did, what how Rad at Home works is that uh, uh, the GMRT in Pune is continuously looking at the sky and they are taking images of sky. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you in very basic terms for you to understand. So they are continuously taking images of the sky and they upload everything on their website. Now it's freely available. You can just go and download it. And with the, with the use of certain tools and softwares, you analyze those images and you find something interesting. And then when you find something interesting, you go and further observe it. Okay, because you have a, a huge chunk of sky with you. And in that chunk, you find a small dot that you feel, oh, this is something interesting that I should look up to and go and further observe it. So we went and further observed it through GMRT. And then we were like, okay, this is something interesting. Let's let's find out you know, about it from other facilities in the world. So we went to Meerkat, we went to CFSG. So we, we went to different telescopes and then we combined all the results and data. And then we were like, okay, this is something new that has never been discovered. It's a black hole galaxy. So, and that's how the whole discovery took place. So yeah, so you can um, go to YouTube. There is a whole animation about this and uh, you can check out the paper also and you can always get back to us if you have more questions. Uh, anything else anyone would like to comment? And you can always, uh, in fact, the ones who are in Delhi, I would like to say that uh, we do have Amateur Astronomer Association Delhi that you can always uh, reach out to and be part of. They do continuous observations through telescopes. They have a lot of uh, night sky observations. They go for, they go to different, different places. And I was also part of uh, AAA at one point of time, but then I moved on to other things. But yeah, if you're starting new and you want to learn more about telescopes, uh, like, you know, home telescopes, I would say, and how to photograph these things from your DSLR camera or your mobile camera, you can always be part of AAA Delhi. Uh, I think Megha uh, will wrap with this. Uh, sure. Again, thank you for coming on the planetarium platform and sharing uh, all the detailed information and knowledge with us. Uh, and I really hope that all the information which was shared during this program, like the entire space week, uh, will help students to get more understanding, more depth understanding, and also in kind of uh, like any career perspective also if they wanted to pursue astronomy education or, or space science and technology. So we'll help them in uh, taking the right uh, choices in their future. With this, uh, we'll wrap today's session. Thank you once again, everyone, for being part of the Space Week 2023. In any sort of uh, insight Planetarium can uh, give you during this program, I think we have made a worth of celebrating this. Uh, Thank you, Prerna, ma'am, and Planetarium for having me in this Space Week. It was, I'm really obliged to be part of this. Definitely, Mega, and we really look forward for more such informative yes. uh, session with you, <laughs> online and offline, probably. <laughs> yes, <laughs> soon. Thank you. Thank right. you, everyone, for your time, precious time, yes. for coming online and being with us. Uh, we look forward for, for your participation in along the program of Planetarium. Yeah, Till now, thanks. thank you. Do take care of yourself. Bye. Bye.